Welcome to another episode of NS16 Ninja Videos. So, in my last video, I spoke about uh, NS16 clusters. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a VIP address. So, when we have three, cluster, uh, three nodes in a cluster, one, two, and three NS16 managers, uh, what we can do is we can configure a VIP address where we say this is the dot three, this is the dot two, this is the dot one, and we can create a VIP address, VIP address, which is the dot one hundred, for example. Now, whenever a connection comes in uh, via the dot one hundred, the VIP will basically select one of the N sixteen managers to send the traffic to, which is going to be the master manager. So uh, let's say somebody is sitting here, uh, not sure what I'm drawing, and somebody is re trying to reach this 100. The 100 will basically go in either one of those N16 managers. I should actually draw a dotted line here, but anyway, you get the picture. Now, um, that means that uh, from a load balancing point of view, there's not really a load balancing. The, tra the traffic will always be sent to one N16 manager. There's also a different way of doing load balancing, and that's uh, that we put a real load balancer uh, in front of the N16 manager. So um, let's draw a simple load balancer, where we can uh, configure the VIP address on this one here, which is going to be 200, for example. And if this user here connects to 200, the load balancer will either send the traffic to one of those uh, N16 manager in, in a load balancing fashion. So uh, one, one connection will go to the one, the other, a new connection will go to the second one, the, 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 the other and third connection will go to the third N16 manager. So that's the way how that works. Um, there's one thing that I want to mention is that when we're using the VIP address of the N16 manager itself, these N16 managers need to be on the same subnet. So also the VIP needs to be on the same subnet. When we use a load balancer, that's not the case. Then we can uh, configure the, the, the N16 managers on different subnets. So here we see our three N16 uh, nodes. And uh, into the cluster, we also see that uh, the virtual IP address is, is empty. Well, before we're going to add a virtual IP address, I first want to add a fully called our DNS record for the full for the for domain name, um, which is going to be path dash two thirty dash n six t dash, and then when you think about this, it's probably going to be lm dash vip and the IP address is going to be the dot seven as the other nodes are already eight nine and ten so let's add it in copy the IP address because I'm going to use the IP address to configure the N6 uh, VIP cluster IP. So now that's done. And let's click on set virtual IP and paste in the IP address I just added the record for. And now we wait until it's configured. takes a little while, less than a minute, but eventually you'll see that the address has been configured. Now let's uh, start connecting to the actual VIP address. Here you 
you can see that my page is not loading uh, so it takes I guess a minute or a minute or two before everything's configured properly at least my DNS record is working so you can see that it's translating to the correct IP address let's do minus T oh and there you see it's already picking so I can probably reach it right now let's try it let's hit refresh yeah there you see it's working so um, yeah, I don't have any certificates installed yet but you can see that uh, I'm able to log in right now and what's happening right now it's just pointing to the master and 16 manager node and the other two nodes are not used at this point for a connection I use for other things but not for this connection and here we see that we're lo logged in so let's go to system let's look at the appliances again and verify the virtual IP address there and here you can still see the clusters uh, degraded. They eventually take some time to become stable. 